see. Uh, the lecture I'll be doing right now is the basics of radiography part one. This will be a little bit shorter lecture. Um, references for the study, well first off more of a thanks to Dr. Hansen for uh, initially making these slides and doing the, the outline and the background research and then I took these lectures over from him. These are based off of the uh, RSNA modules on radiographic image receptors, image quality and dose in radiography, concepts in radiography, and the digital x-ray imaging modules. Also there's a uh, Huda and Bushberg chapters that could be applicable to this if you want to read those books. So do you need to know about film and how it works? Uh, the answer is not really except that some groups still actually use plain films, although not very many now. Um, so if you find a group that still uses it, try really hard not to join any of them. Um, but because there are still probably a few places that use film out there, although it's getting less and less all the time, it still could technically be testable, although I think it's, again, less and less so. Um, but don't waste too much time on it for that reason. Uh, all x-rays are basically, so yeah, all x-ray studies radiography studies are going to work on the basic principle that you have an x-ray source. The source is going to shoot x-ray beams through the patient. Some of those beams will be attenuated um, and some will go through the patient and will reach an x-ray detector. Um, there might be a collimator uh, in between or a grid that helps uh, reduce scatter, uh, but you may, may also not have that. So you're basically making a 2D image from a 3D, 3D structure. Uh, the x-rays pass through the patient to an image receptor, and that rece receptor can be screen film or digital. Uh, different parts of the body will uh, attenuate x-rays different, differently that leads to differential absorption. So things like, uh, so that'll make something more white or black. Things like scatter radiation and attempts to limit scatter can lead to artifacts. The image receptors, receptors, your basic options are film screen, direct digital imaging, and indirect digital imaging, which is also called computed radiography. So film screen uh, is one example here. Basically you have the x-rays, they hit a phosphor that converts the x-rays into light. The light exposes the film, the film gets developed, and then maybe you would scan it and make it digital or you'll just look at it on, as the film. Indirect digital x-rays, the x-rays hit a storage uh, phosphor that's on a sheet, so it's, it looks similar to an x-ray cassette. And then you use red light to, um, to release the image from the storage phosphor, and then that gets detected and turned into a digital image. Or you can have a scintillator, which then creates visible light that then goes to a digital detector that then becomes a digital image. Or you can have um, you can have the x-rays directly hit some sort of photon detector that then turns that into digital information directly. So film screen. Um, this is an example of what a cassette would look like. So the x-rays go through the cassette. They hit an intensifying screen, which is a, a scintillator that turns the x-ray energy into visible light energy and then you have a film sandwiched in between the two screens and so if the x-rays either collide with something in this side of the screen or within this side of the screen it'll create visible light and expose the x-ray film in that area. So screen film, the x-ray hits a pho the phosphor, converts it into visible light the thicker the phosphor, the more likely it is to stop the x-ray and turn it into light, but the more the light can disperse within the phosphor, and so you have lower resolution. Also, the same thing is an issue with having two phosphors. You can um, have more scatter from the, the photon, and you have lower resolution. Uh, the light will then hit a silver halide in the film that then releases an electron, causes silver to precipitate out onto the film, and then when you develop it, it fixes the... Uh, silver on the film. The speed of the system is basically, if you think about it as how long do you have to 
have x-rays exposing the film to get it to develop to get it to have an image and so the longer you have to do it then it's a, a slower film whereas if you don't have to do it very long then it's a fast film the trade-off uh, is typically that faster films will have lower resolution so the light liberates an electron from the grain combines with silver which uh, forms neutral silver that gets stuck onto the gets stuck onto the, the piece of plastic that is the film the film will stabilize over time, or stabilize with, when you develop it, but that does degrade over time. It becomes more foggy, which happens more when the film is degraded by heat or humidity. So this is an example of fogging on an old film. Everything just becomes more white. Uh, you don't have to know a whole lot, I don't think, about film development, but there are automated developers that you feed the film in through the cassette that's dark in there, and it runs it through a number of chemical baths that are kept at certain temperatures and out the other end pops a developed film and there are or there were all kind of QC things that you have to do and this is not very fun to do so imaginably most people don't don't want to do plain film radiography okay so first question I'll pause it to let you look at it and now we'll discuss here which is used for screen film typically has a uh, scintillator, so it would be rare earth elements are typically used for the scintillators. So the screens, uh, the film by itself will not absorb enough x-rays, it's very thin, so you use, and, it, and it's not very efficient at converting the, the x-ray energy into uh, um, silver ions, or silver, silver particles, and so the x-ray photons when they're converted into light, they're much more efficient at creating the image, which is why we use them, so you don't have to use as much dose, and you can get the imaging more quickly, and there's less motion. The screens are made out of various materials, usually rare earth elements, and they are they vary in thickness and efficiency and speed. Usually, the uh, intensification factor of a screen will be 30 to 50 in terms of the amount of the difference is that it makes in, in how much x-ray photon would have developed the film versus having the scintillator. Cassettes are basically the name of the whole assembled process. So what you have is a film inserted in the cat cassette that has two screens on the other side. The only exception to this is mammography, which has one screen so that you can have higher resolution. Cassettes, like anything physical, can get damaged. You can break those screens, and so that's why you need to do QC on the cassettes. And then also to make sure that the light gets well transferred to the screen, you need to have good screen and film contact. What is least likely to affect the speed of a screen film combination? I'll let you think about that. Okay, so the answer is the cassette dimensions. So the size of the cassette doesn't really matter how long you have to expose it to radiation to get it to create an image, but the type of film, the phosphor material, and the screen thickness, those things will affect it. The speed of a system is based on the, the film and what's on the film and how it was manufactured and also the thickness of the phosphor. And in general, the faster the screen, meaning uh, you, you, you use less radiation to get it exposed, but you'll have lower detail or more noise. And ways you can do that is you can have different kinds of emulsions that make larger granules, so those will make faster. Uh, film and then also you can have thicker phosphors which lead to a larger area of scatter so that also will increase the speed of the system but reduce resolution. So what's more correct? Which would you like to use? So an abdomen x-ray, the answer here is for an abdomen x-ray you would want to use a fast screen because it's a really thick area of the body and you're not really looking necessarily for fine anatomic detail, but you don't want to give a huge radiation dose, so you'd want to use a fast screen. The wrist, you're looking for high anatomic detail, and it's a small area of the body, so you're not going to have to use a ton of radiation, so you could use a slow screen for that. Okay, digital x-ray imaging. So digital x-ray imaging really improves efficiency because you don't have to be handling all of the film and, or the, and doing all the developing. Also, it helps decrease dose and increase image quality in terms of contrast, although the resolution is not as high when you're considering physical pixel detectors versus 
small atoms that are being developed on the film, the the uh, quality just won't be as large, or it won't, won't the resolution won't be as good. Um, there are two types of digital X-ray imaging: computed radiography versus digital radiography. So in digital imaging, like a digital camera, the way things work is light is focused through a lens onto a detector uh, that has a number of small pixels. Charge, the amount of charge accumulated by the sensors is pro uh, proportional to the number of photons, and so that's how bright the spot needs to be, and then it's converted to images through the computer. Digital imaging has better contrast because the answer here is it has a wider dynamic range of signal response. So this is what makes it better, is the contrast, not necessarily the resolution. So a film system, you have to, if you have too low of a dose, the everything will look white. And if you have too high of a dose, everything will look black. And there's only a thin range of radiation exposure that will create some shade of gray so that you can tell the difference between structures. Whereas with a digital detector, you can have a very low dose or very high dose, and you can still be producing differences in shades of gray. And then after the fact, you can adjust that to make your image look nice. <clears throat> the problem with this is if you give too low of a dose, the images will look noisy with the digital system. But if you give too high of a dose, Unlike with a film system where everything then will look black, everything will still look good and it won't be noisy. And so you can, uh, there's something called exposure creep, which can lead to, you can end up getting higher dose of radiation than necessary, but still have good looking images with digital systems. So this is basically what I described. We have a very thin range of appropriate radiation that you can expose the film to, to create a usable image. So digital imaging, there's direct versus indirect. Um, indirect would be if you have some sort of scintillator that converts things to light and then you send it to your digital detector, whereas direct and x-ray would immediately be um, converted into uh, digital information. Computed radiography is kind of an uh, intermediate step between screen film and full digital systems. Uh, it's nice because you can use it with your old x-ray machines and you just instead use these cassettes in place of film cassettes. And what there is is, is inside the cassettes for computed radiography there's a storage phosphor and when it gets exposed it basically stores the information. And if you shine a red laser at the storage phosphor it releases detectable visible light. And so you run the film through a special machine, you shine a laser at it, and you run the laser across the machine back and forth, and then you have another detector that detects everything except red light. And you can read out exactly how how much radiation exposure was at each point on the film and turn that into an image. And then at the end of it, you expose the whole film to white light, and that basically resets it. So all of that we, we said. So photosimulable phosphors are read out using what color of light? And so I said on the last slide, it's red light. They use laser beams. Flat panel, flat panel scintillators uh, using CCD. So these are types of indirect digital detectors. So they have uh, a scintillator and then CCDs are a type of imaging detector digital imaging detector that can only be used or that can only be so large so you have to have something kind of that that makes the image get smaller so they use a fiber optic taper here uh, and the nice idea here is that you don't have to um, take the in the uh, computed radiography where you're it's still digital but you're physically reading off of that storage phosphor here you don't have to do that you get the image immediately and so that's the uh, reason to do that. Historically, the problem with these systems was that they were more bulky, though now of course that's changing, and um, uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. And so here's an example more of a direct 
system and so the x-rays come here they cause something to happen with ions and then that gets detected by these collection electrodes and then that can be read out so thin film transistor uh, is a way to make a detector that's larger than the CCD and you can still put that under a scintillator to create a type of indirect digital detector uh, and then oh sorry a photoconductor absorbs x-rays and converts energy directly to I'll let you pause and think about it converts it into a charge so a photoconductor converts x-rays into a charge so this is our final type of detector so where the all the other detectors use some sort of scintillator to make light uh, to turn the x-ray beams into light and then detected it either digitally or with film what this does is this selenium photoconductor an x-ray photon hits that and directly converts it into an electrical guitar charge which is detected by a thin film transistor and can be turned into an image So this is the newest uh, technology. It can lower patient dose and use the same image quality. So again, it's the selenium and it passes through to be det detected. Somehow that works. And I don't think that you have to understand exactly how that works. Okay, so what are, what are the things that, uh, what, another thing that can make digital radiography better than film radio, uh, radiography is that you can do computer processing on it or computer magic. Um, you can take the electronic data and you can manipulate it before you see it. And so you can do things like removing pure black and pure white pixels. You can filter, you can remove noise, you can do energy subtraction. Uh, all kinds of things like that can make your images look better. And it allows you to get a lower dose and you can create better task specific images. So here's examples of different kinds of uh, processing you can do. So the left, sorry, the, 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 this would be the, the raw data. And if you put an edge enhancement filter on it, you can see you know, the edges of the, the vessels much more distinctly, although the images look a little bit normal. Whereas you can have advancement of um, edges of uh, features of all sizes here is, is what they say that this is. So basically they've, they've done some sort of processing to bring different things out. And this is another, this is a lumbar spine where here that edge enhancement really makes those vertebral bodies pop compared to the, the raw image. So which of the following would be used as a photoconductor in direct flat panel digital detectors? I'll let you think about that. And the answer here is selenium. And we talked about that. So that concludes part one here. And uh, we'll do part two as a separate video. Thank you.